Hi everyone and welcome back to this tutorial series on building websites in R using the Distill package. In today's tutorial, we will modify the content of our homepage. So let's go to the R Girls website just for a quick reminder of what the homepage looks like that we're going to try to recreate today. So here we have the R Girls website and there are three main things we're going to change today. So first we're going to add in our logo. Now for you, this might be either a logo or it might be a profile picture. We're also going to edit our interactive buttons here. And finally, we'll change the main content, this main text on our homepage. All right, so we will open up our project. So actually I'll just show you. So all I've done is I've gone here and now we'll open up the Distill Tutorial project. Okay, so we can see we're working inside our project and here are all of our files. Now I actually already have my index.rmd file open up, but if you don't, that's okay. All you have to do is go to files and click on index. Okay, so in the last tutorial, we did already add in our title that we want. So the first thing we're going to do now is change our image. Because if we take a look and we build our website, we can see right now there's no image because I do not have any sort of file that's frank.jpg. So the first thing you wanna do is find an image that you want to use for your website. So I have mine saved to my desktop out here. I'm just going to create a new folder and put it inside. I just like to keep all of my images organized just so I know exactly where they are. Okay, so I have my logo inside my images folder. So now going back to our studio, we can see now there's our images folder and here is our logo. Okay, so now we have to update this line of code. So remember, because I created a new folder, we have to tell R that our logo is actually saved inside our images folder. So you have to go inside images and then we're going to use a slash and then we can say rgirlslogo.jpg. Now you will notice that I use an underscore here. I highly recommend avoiding using white spaces at all costs. Programming languages often run into issues with white spaces. So it's just a good practice to avoid it. So that's why, again, that's why I have this underscore. Now you'll also notice that my file is saved as a JPEG. So you do wanna make sure your extensions match up. So let's knit our file and see if that worked. And yes, that looks great. Our beautiful R Girls logo um, is showing up. I will say I've built a couple of websites in the past where I have run into issues getting my logo to show up. Um, so the first thing, of course, make sure you spelled everything right or else it won't work. But then the second thing I would recommend is changing your file type. For example, if if you've saved your logo as a PNG and it's not working, maybe try converting it to a JPEG and seeing if that will resolve your issue. Okay, great. So we have our logo and now let's work on the buttons. So you can see right now we have, if I scroll down a little bit, we have LinkedIn, Twitter, GitHub, and an email. Now, just to keep this tutorial on a relatively shorter, We'll, we'll only work on the Twitter and GitHub. So even if I just knit this, and you'll see I like to knit or build the website very frequently just to make sure I haven't run into any errors along the way. It kind of just helps troubleshoot and lets you know if there is an error where it's occurring. Okay, so no errors so far, so that's great. So the first thing, of course, we wanna update the URLs. So I'm going to put in the R Girls Twitter and the R Girls GitHub. Okay, so again, I'll just quickly knit this. Let's just test out Twitter. And even from our studio, it opened it up um, to the right page here. So that's great. Okay, so now. I do wanna show you, you may have noticed that I have these little 
fun icons on the buttons on the R Girls website. This is something that I actually saw on, if you remember from the last tutorial, uh, the last tutorial on Shannon's website, she had these fun logo uh, icons as well. So what I did in order to figure out how to do this myself, I went to her GitHub and I found her distill repository. And the same way we're working in our index folder, I went and found her index folder. So this is where I saw her label. It's a little bit more complicated. So here, I'm just going to, I'm actually just going to copy and paste it because this is exactly what I did. So rather than just Twitter, we're going to add some CSS code or HTML code. And now let's knit this. And, and here we go. Now we have our Twitter loop icon as well. So I'll do the same thing because I believe she does also have, here it is, her GitHub. And knit that. Okay, so that's pretty much how I found out about this. Um, so I will also quickly show you, if you do want to see all of the details on the R Girls website, for example, if you want to do anything, add any of these other buttons, you can go to R Girls and the website repository. And here, of course, we again want to find the index. And here's all the information. So I'll leave it just at these two for right now. But again, you do have access to that resource if you're interested. The one other thing I will change with these two buttons, if I click on the button as it is, it will open up the Twitter page uh, without opening up a new tab. So if I wanted to go back to the R Girls website, I would have to go and use the back arrow. So I always recommend when you're creating links to try to open it up in a new tab so people don't lose their place on your website. All right, so to do this, we're going to add a little bit uh, more code and I'm going to just change these to single quotes just to make it a little bit more or clearer to see. Okay, so so far I haven't done anything. It's just single quotes now. And at the end of the URL, inside the single quote, I'm going to put this text here, target equals quote underscore blank quote. Okay, so we're going to put that in both of the URLs. All right, and let's see, make sure again, make sure there are no errors. And now let's see if that worked. It should open up in a new tab and that's perfect. So now we can go back. All right, so this is, this is just some code. You can Google it, um, but it will be the same code every time when you want to open up a link in a new tab, this is the code that you'll want to use. Okay, so that's it for changing the buttons. Um, everything looks really good and you have the um, resource if you want to check out more of what we did for the R Girls website specifically. So the last thing we're going to do is add, uh, edit the actual main content of the website. So if we scroll down, by default, we see we have a bio, education, and experience. And here, up until this point, we were working within what's called the YAML, right? So within these three dashes. But now if we scroll down, we're working within the main area of the R markdown file, right? So outside of the YAML. So here, this is just using the R markdown language, and I'm not going to go through all of the details of how to do that. Hopefully, I'm sure some of you are already familiar with R Markdown. If you're not, I can point you to, again, I do have a different blog post on introduction to R. So this is on my website and I have a whole section on um, R Markdown. So you can scroll down, read all about the YAML, R chunks, and here we go, here's the Markdown language. So I do recommend checking this out if our markdown is new to you. But for now, we're just going to delete all of this because this is not our information. 
and I'll go back to the Art Girls website and all I'm going to do, because of course all of your content for your website is going to be completely different. So we're not too worried about the content here. So I'm just going to copy and paste. I will add a header for the welcome and I will add in a couple of bullet points, which I can easily add just with these dashes. Okay, so let's knit this and that looks great. So we will quickly just compare to our website and all right, that looks really good. Now, of course, I also, I'm not going to worry about the rest of this for now, but remember we do have the Our Girls website. I'll just go back to it again. And again, if you go to the index, you can see exactly how I added in the licensing information and even how I added in the emoji, which is a little bit more complicated. You do have to add in, uh, this is like a inline R chunk, I guess that's how I would call it. And I'm using a package called emo, short for emoji. So you'll have to make sure to have all of that installed in order for something like this to work. But we're not going to worry about that for this tutorial. And I think this is looking really great. So the last thing, of course, we're going to do is um, push everything to GitHub. So remember, we want to stage, commit, and push. So the first thing, we're going to go tools, shell. I always do it this way, git add uh, dash capital A. This will stage everything for us. Now you can go here and try to check all of the boxes, but sometimes I've realized it will crash if you have too many changes. So I tend to always do it through the tool, tools and shell. Okay, and here I will say, leave myself a message, update homepage and commit. And finally we can push. All right, so that, again, we wanna look for this. So that looks good and that's all set. So in the next tutorial, we will update, we will create our own theme. So I think that's a really fun part. You can kind of design your website as you like. You can change the fonts, the colors and stuff like that. So that's what we'll do next time. And thank you so much for watching and looking forward to seeing you next time.